I didn't play well because of my problem with my ankle. And then in, uh, in a, on a certain moment, look, I have to stop because I can't uh, train anymore, I can't play anymore. So I went to Barcelona to a doctor who had nothing to do with Ajax or Milan, whatever. And he said, OK, you have to be operated because there's something really wrong in your ankle. Van Basten missed six months of that season, but crucially for his country, his return coincided with that summer's European Championships. The Netherlands lost their opening fixture, though, to the Soviet Union. Van Basten began that game on the bench, but was recalled to the starting eleven for the following match, a must-win encounter against England. Wow, Wallace had a tough season, but a little bit tired also. He was fresh, and I think he gave us the boost that we needed, especially against England. That was a special game for me. Lining up for England that afternoon was John Barnes. The players insisted Marco played, and we were quite happy at that because he hadn't been fit. We ruled that decision because he was just an incredible player, Marco Van Basten. He was a complete footballer. Van Basten scored twice more, not so much a hat-trick as a statement of intent. The English were undone by a Dutch masterclass, one which ultimately led to a semi-final showdown with old rivals West Germany. For some, there were scores to settle. A lot of people in, in Holland, they didn't really forget the 74 World Champion Finals. For them it was very important. A lot of uh, the Dutch had uh, problems with the Germans. But uh, I wasn't like that. Uh, I was just playing football and I wanted to beat the opponent. Van Basten did just that, striking the winner with just two minutes remaining to seal a momentous 2-1 win. Everybody was happy uh, that we won against Germany. I was happy because we went to the final and that was something that was for me important. Once again, the Soviet Union stood in their way, but Lightning was not about to strike twice. First on the score sheet was Ruud Hullet, but the best was yet to come. Marco made something out of it that was, uh, yeah, something to remember. It was just a moment and, uh, and we are still celebrating it. I jumped up in front of the television. I had tears in my eyes. I really cried. For a second, your heart simply stops and all you can hear is the crowd cheering. What started as a very difficult uh, tournament uh, changed as, as a, a dream uh, for, for someone like me. Of course, I regard this one as very special, the win and becoming champions. Such moments become engraved in your memory. It was something not really expected. And, uh, but I was happy that uh, my ankle was uh, feeling uh, much better. And uh, I couldn't start pretty uh, good and fresh on the next season with, uh, with AC Milan. Van Basten had peaked internationally, but Milan went from strength to strength. The club's Dutch contingent was further boosted by the arrival of Marco's former Ajax teammate, Frank Rijkaard. It was a great team, not only the, the Marco in Root, for instance, but uh, especially the Italian players. They were really down to earth, working uh, really very, very hard. Italians are more focused on the road ahead. Well, as the Dutch think, we're playing for 90 minutes and we have to win. They brought that mentality with them. They were all good players, but not only good players, they were also good uh, persons, because everybody wants to play football, they liked training, and uh, they didn't really think about other things, they just want to be uh, a good player and winning a lot of things. It was a very strong group, a team who really knew their football. And we were a team which didn't rely on any one individual. That was significant too, as individually, all our players were excellent. 
Milan now sought their destiny. Success in Europe was the minimal requirement and the opportunity arrived in 1989 against Star Bucharest. When we went with the bus to the stadium, uh, we were crossing, I think, more than 95,000 Milan fans. And you all saw a sea of black and, and red. If you see all these people, all these crowds, that was very emotional. It was like a, a home game for us. And uh, the sensation already after two, three minutes that, that uh, this was our game. That was a special uh, night. We played a fantastic game. From the first minute, we dominated the game. We played a very good game, all of us. We were moving on the pitch as a team. It was like a, an organism on the pitch and it was moving all together. I think it was, yeah, one of the perfect games that we played. Van Basten and Hullet scored twice each. Milan had set a new standard in European football. It was a standard they maintained the following season in Vienna. Van Basten's pass set up Frank Rijkaard as Milan defended their title against Benfica. The Dutch were helping the Italians dominate Europe. The Rossoneri were inescapably the continent's best team, and Marco van Basten was hailed as Europe's finest player. I suppose the person who really pushed us forward was van Basten, because of his ability in front of goal and the goals he scored. A really great player. I think he was excellent. Uh, I just did everything to give him the ball as, as much as possible. He was the most beautiful striker I've ever seen. He had an incredible elegance about him. He could do anything with the ball. He is and he was the, one of the best strikers in the, in the world. He could score goals in every possible way. Spectacular goals, tap-ins, individual goals. He was a complete footballer. It wasn't just about his goals. He was very quick. He was good one-on-one. -on -one. He was strong in the air. He had a great shot with either foot. It was hard to find a quality that he didn't possess. Off the pitch, he was a little less charismatic than Rude. But on it, he was a lot more important and decisive. And all the players knew that. They knew Marco's importance on the pitch and to listen when he spoke, even if he did speak less than Rude. Consistently victorious, repeatedly triumphant. Van Basten won a third Ballon d'Or, equaling the achievement of Cruyff and Platini before him. The young Dutchman, though, was running on borrowed time. When the, the fields became harder or softer, I had more problems with my ankle. So I went to the doctor and he said, OK, we can, uh, we can clean your ankle. They call it a nettoyage. Clean it and then if it's uh, cleaned, you can just play easily for a few uh, more years. But uh, it all went wrong. It, get from bad to worse and in the end I couldn't walk anymore. Football was my life and I, I was uh, dying as a football player. Marco did return for the 1993 Champions League final against Olympic Marseille but was a shadow of his former self. A marked man since his youth, a victim of his own ability, Marco van Basten would never play football again. All the cartridge was gone and uh, I worked and I uh, tried everything for two and a half years. He had to give it up and that was really tough on him, which is understandable because he loved playing football. So yes, it was over. It was all over. For about ten years, Marco van Basten was the best footballer in Europe. Ten years. An injury ended that. It was, it was very, very difficult to accept the fact that I had to stop playing football. It was something what I never, ever had uh, expected. Milan's success continued without Marco, but from the touchline, the view was bittersweet. I was still young. I was, uh, when it uh, happened, it was uh, only 28 years. 
and I had uh, still so much uh, possibilities and will to uh, to show to all the people and to play football. I, it was it was a yeah, pity that I couldn't continue. That was something what is just bad luck. Van Basten moved into coaching with spells back at Ajax either side of a stint in charge of the national team. He also returned to UVV, where he opened their new stadium before donning their colours one last time. A pleasant reminder of an outstanding talent, a sad reminder of what might have been. I've always said Van Basten is the best player I ever played with, because he only had a few years to show his full talent. He won three Ballon d'Or, yet was only 28 when he retired. Most players have a little more time than that. Well, pride, the meaning of the word is clear, but it goes way beyond that. I had a son who was a top player. What else could you wish for? I was happy, and so was he. I played uh, 10 years professional uh, football, and it was something uh, very special. It was, uh, I'm, I'm glad that I've uh, made it very well with Ajax and also with AC Milan. On the other side, it's a pity that uh, it, it stopped already when I was uh, 28. So that was a pity, but in the end, uh, I was happy to uh, have had all these uh, nice experiences.